Hi traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ doing another video collaboration with Bar Chart. Today we're going to be looking at selling cash secured puts. But before we get into it, just a quick disclaimer that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So if you've been thinking about selling put options to either generate income or acquire a stock at below the market price, if so, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to show you how to find candidates for put selling, how selling puts works, and some important tips. I'll also show you one thing that you absolutely must avoid. I've been doing this for nearly 20 years and have had lots of successful and unsuccessful trades. Today, you get to learn from my experience and hopefully avoid some of the mistakes I made in those early years. A cash secured put involves selling an out of the money put option and simultaneously setting aside enough cash to buy the stock. The goal is to either have the put expire worthless and keep the premium, or to be assigned and acquire the stock below the current market price. It's important that anyone selling puts understands that they may be assigned 100 shares at the strike price. So why do we trade cash secured puts? Well, selling cash secured puts is a bullish trade, but slightly less bullish than outright stock ownership. If the investor was strongly bullish, they would prefer to look at strategies like a long call or a bull call spread. Investors would sell a put on a stock they think will stay flat, rise slightly, or at worst, not drop too much. Put sellers set, a night, set aside enough capital to purchase the shares and are happy to take ownership of the stock if called upon to do so by the put buyer. Naked put sellers, on the other hand, have no intention of taking ownership of the stock and are purely looking to generate premium from option selling strategies. The more bullish the investor is, the closer they should sell the put to the current stock price. This will generate the most amount of premium and increase the chances of the put being assigned. Selling deep out of the money puts generates the smallest amount of premium and is less likely to see the put assigned. Selling put options is essentially an income strategy. It's very similar to covered call trading with similar risks, rewards and profit potential. By selling puts, an investor can achieve above average returns while waiting for the stock to come down to a price at which they're happy to buy, gain some downside protection if the stock drops. For example, a 20% drop in the stock may see the put seller suffer only a 10% loss due to the premium received. They can make effective use of spare cash while waiting to get into the market, take advantage of high volatility during market corrections, and take a contrarian approach when there's a lot of fear in the market, which can see put sellers handsomely rewarded. Like any option strategy, there are times when selling puts will perform well and times when it will underperform. Selling puts works great in sideways, slightly bullish and even slightly bearish markets. However, this strategy will underperform during raging bull markets as investors will miss out on the capital gains provided by rapidly rising stock prices. Here are a couple of tips for selling put options. Stick to stable blue chip companies or use ETFs such as sector ETFs or country ETFs. Put selling should be very boring and it's best to avoid growth companies that can experience huge drops. And we've seen a few examples of that recently. Choose stocks and ETFs you're happy to own for five plus years. A high premium does not guarantee a high return. Be prepared for and have cash available to cover assignment and stick to selling out of the money puts. It's easier to talk through the mechanics of selling puts using some examples. Here, we're looking at two different examples from January the 3rd, Walgreens, which is a low beta, low volatility stock. It doesn't move around too much. And Tesla, which is a high volatility uh, growth stock that can have big stock price movements. We're using the same amount of days to expiration, 45 days. We've got our strike price, which is a roughly around a 30 delta for both. The premium generated for the Walgreens trade is only $102 compared to $870 for Tesla. Doesn't mean because we can generate more premium from Tesla that it's a better opportunity because it has different risks and rewards. Now, if we look at our little calculations at the bottom here, we can see that this trade has a 9% margin for error. The stock can drop to about $33.98 and that's our break even price. So if it's above $33.98 at expiration, we've made some money. So a nice 9% margin for error. If Walgreens stays above 35 between now and the 17th of Feb, 
the put will expire worthless, we keep the $102 premium, and we've made a 3% return, which when we annualize that is around 23.82%. The maximum loss is equal to the strike price minus the premium times 100. So 33.98 in total potential loss if Walgreens goes to zero. Now that's fairly unlikely, um, but it could potentially happen. Tesla, on the other hand, has a much higher margin for error because it's a higher volatility stock. So there's a nearly 17% margin for error for selling a 30 delta 45 day Tesla put. The return also is much higher, 8.59%, which annualizes out to 68%. Tesla's a higher price stock, so it requires more capital to place that trade. If you're assigned at 110, you'd need $10,130 which is basically the 110 times 100 minus the 870 premium. So two very different trades, one with low volatility, low return, one with high volatility, high return. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I prefer low volatility trades. Other people may prefer the high volatility trades, but if you're getting started out, you typically want to stick to fairly stable, boring companies and avoid the growth stocks. That's what we've seen with Tesla recently. It's had a pretty big drop. And that's not going to be good for people selling puts on Tesla. Selling short-term puts will generate more time decay and achieve a higher annualized return. However, the premium received will be lower, which means the break-even price will be closer to the stock price. Longer-term puts will generate higher premium, but will result in less time decay and a lower annual return. Short-term trades will require more active management whereas long-term trades can be a bit more set and forget and you don't need to check them quite as regularly. It's important to find a style that works for you. If you have a lot of time to dedicate to this type of strategy, you can just go with the short-term trades. If you don't have a lot of time to be watching the trades, watching the market, you might be better with the long-term strategies. In terms of finding put selling candidates, I like to do a simple a stock screener using bar chart. Firstly, I want to find any stocks with high volatility or a high IV percentile. So above 40%, I want pretty decent option volume so that we have a nice tight bid ask spread and good liquidity. I want to stick to fairly large cap stocks, so anything above 40 billion. And I want to stick to anything that has a buy rating. So that's a really simple scan that you can use to find some put selling candidates. As of January 3rd, that gave us the following results. So you can see here, some pretty solid blue chip companies most of the way down here. Most of them with buy ratings. Now, they are high price stocks, a lot of these. So this may not be appropriate for everybody, depending on how much capital you have. For example, to sell a Johnson & Johnson put, you'd have to have the cash available to buy 100 shares, which would be roughly $17,600 available. But that's a nice little scanner. Hope you find that helpful. Um, that's sort of how I find candidates for this type of strategy. So in summary, selling put options is a popular strategy for option traders and an easy place for beginners to get started. Put selling is considered slightly more conservative than owning stocks. Selling puts give some downside protection and will produce slight outperformance compared to stock ownership in a falling market. During a strong bull market, selling puts will underperform stocks given that the gains are limited to the premium received. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below and make sure to check out optionstradingiq.com. Lots of free educational material there for those who are looking to learn to trade options.